Some time ago, I started a quest to get my shop, my tools and my materials organized. I have shared some of those organizers I made. For example, I previously posted how I got my screwdrivers organized with magnetic tool holders. I also made some benchstock organizers and a few other things. This has made a big difference in my shop. I intend to keep sharing these type of items whether I invented them myself or I found them elsewhere. Recently, I discovered Zach Friedman's Gritfinity system and I was immediately hooked. If you have not seen his crazy videos, you should. They're entertaining and full of good ideas. I put a link to his channel in the description. When I started printing some of those Gritfinity bases, I found that I actually needed some sizes that were a little different. I was amazed to also find a Fusion add-in that automates the resizing of both Gritfinity bases and organizers. Just check out the speed right here and the ease of making an organizer box and a base shown here in real time. In this video I'll show you how to make just about any size Gridfinity system to fit your own needs. I will update a couple of my previous organizers to the system and show you how easy it is to make. This automated add-in was made by a person named Lev Mission and he calls it Gridfinity Generator. I'll show you how to find this and install it in your Fusion app. So let's uh, open up Fusion. In the toolbar, click on Utilities. Select Add-ins and now click on Fusion App Store. Once this link opens, uh, start typing Gridfinity in the search panel and Gridfinity generators should pop up, just click on that. Now select the app. Choose your operating system. I use Windows 64-bit. Now click on download and once the um, download uh, box opens, you can choose to save it or just open it and it will install automatically for you. If you're having trouble with, this, with the installation or want more information about the app, scroll down to find the help page. Click on that and you get a complete instructions here. Once the app is uh, downloaded and installed, you should uh, close F Fusion and then reopen Fusion. Now go back into the utilities and add-ins and double check that your add-in actually got uh, installed. There it is. I intend to use it a lot, so I'll add it to my toolbar. Go back to the solid tab. The new app can be found at the bottom of the Create tab. Hover over the items and add them to the toolbar. Now, let's uh, make some Gridfinity organizers. To do that, I'm going to use a Benchdog organizer I made in a previous video, and I'm going to change that into a Gridfinity organizer. I'll use standard Gridfinity sizes, which is 42 millimeters for this one, and I'll fit it into a drawer I have. Then I'll make some tool bit holders uh, that will fit the rest of the drawer. These will be my own custom sizes. How do I find that previous video? In the description below, I'll have links to the 3D files for this project, as well as previous organizers, and of course the videos. The 3D sites will also have my Fusion checklist that I have shown you in the past. First, I'm going to make a base in standard 42mm grid size, that is 3 grids wide and 5 grids long. I highly recommend setting the preview on, even though it slows down the computer quite a bit. But at least until you know how to use this app, it will save you time as you can see what is happening. Just look at the changes here as I set the grid size. There are countless options and settings you can choose. I will show you a sampling here. First of all, there are three uh, grid types you can choose from. There is a skeleton I see in here, light and full. 
I'm going to use light. You'll see later why. Anyway, just by clicking on some of the many options, you can customize the type of base you want. This is the base I desired. It's ready to save and print. Click OK. This is one of the few times I don't see much need for my Fusion checklist. The Gridfinity generator does a fantastic job all on its own. Look here. The generator sets up proper components. It even names all the steps so it's easy to find any area you might want to edit. As always, you can edit from the browser or the timeline. However, even as easy as it is uh, to edit, I recommend just using the generator panel for all the settings as it just works. You can easily uh, measure the resulting base by clicking I and selecting the edges, but there's a much better way you'll see in the next step. Now let's make one of these organizers into a Gradfinity style that fits the base we just made. Open the bin panel and make sure that the preview is set to on. Just as uh, with the base, there are countless options you can set. And again, there are three types of bins to choose from, hollow, shelled, and solid. I need to use the solid type for this project. Let's get the right size here, which is uh, 3 by 5 as with the base. And here's that easy way to get the dimensions I mentioned. These are a perfect match for the measurements I showed you previously. Next, I will set the bin height to 1 to make a solid bottom for the bin stalks. We don't need to be looking at the base right now, so turn off the visibility and then click OK on the bin, bin panel and we are ready to get to work for the bin stocks. But before adding any custom designs, make sure you save the file so any errors you might make does not force you to start all over. Normally I would set up a bunch of parameters at this point, but it is this is so simple it's not worth it. I want the bin stocks holes to be 15 millimeter deep, so I will extrude the bin by that amount. Now I need a construction rectangle to place my holes. To do that I'll use offset. Choose the top of the bin as the drawing plane and use your mouse scrolling wheel to make the whole thing visible. Click on the edge and offset the edges by 15 and 15.25 millimeter. Since it's inside, it will be a negative number. Click OK and then double click on the rectangle. Then click on X to make it a, make it a construction line. Click on Finish Sketch or hit Enter. Time to make the first hole. Click on the corner of the re uh, construction, construction rectangle. Then open the hole panel. Set the first two hole options to simple and the drill point to flat. It's tempting to use the clearance hole tap type, but I think it's better to control the clearance directly here. As mentioned, the hole depth should be 15 mm. The bench stocks are 20 mm wide, and as I mentioned, the clearance we set here, we use 0.45, I find that to work great. Before multiplying the hole, Let's uh, add a fillet of one millimeter. Here's our completed hole. I need the measurements of the rectangle. Make the sketch visible and click I for measurements. Clicking on the rectangle, we see that it's uh, 95 millimeter wide and 100. 79 millimeter long. We will uh, use those measurements as we open rectangular 
pattern. Make sure to select features and then select the new hole and the fillet in the timeline. Select the width and the length in the construction rectangle as the axes and then enter the measurements and a quantity and four, or 4 and 7 respectively for our hole pattern. Last, turn off the sketch, then F again for fillet, and double click on the perimeter to select the edge. Make the fillet 2 millimeters. Click OK and then Ctrl S to save the file. The organizer is done and ready to print. It's time to make the hex organizers to fill in the rest of the drawer. I will go fast here as most of the procedure is the same. One drawer opening is 4 inches or 101.6 mm. I will divide that into three great finity grids of 33.5 mm each for a total of 100.5 mm. That leaves a small clearance. First I will make one of the narrow bins and then I will make the base.
Remember I told you there were some good reasons to choose the light base for non-standard sizes? Here's one of the reasons. See how some of the features get messed up with the other types? You can repair that in the timeline, but trust me, this is complex. Besides, the other reason for choosing the light type is that it takes up a lot less space and less plastic, prints faster, and it works just fine for most applications. The last thing I want to show you is how to handle areas where there just isn't enough space for a grid or where you just need the base extended a little bit. This is handled with the side uh, padding and you can add that to any and all uh, of the sides of your base. I didn't catch all of that. Is there a way for me to look at the details? Yes, in the description you will have find links to the 3D files as well as the Fusion files. They are uploaded to both Bamboo Labs Maker World as well as on uh, printables. Do you have other similar videos? And how will I know when you post more videos? Yes, I do. On my YouTube channel page, I try to organize similar videos into a playlist. And of course, you're familiar with this. That is all for now. I hope to see you in the next video.